China's great leap into space, boldly going where few have gone before. Only the third nation in the world able to launch its own astronauts into space. They're doing it for real in the heavens. Now, go behind the scenes of a top secret mission, codename Shenzhou 7. In this high-stakes, high-tech operation, the rewards are great, and so are the dangers. Follow the astronauts. Rocket scientists and engineers as they count down to a mission like none other. Blazing a trail to the future, a giant step in space exploration that could propel one of the world's oldest civilizations to the moon and beyond. T minus 200 days, Beijing City. Location, classified. For a new breed of space explorer, this is where it all begins. China's most advanced training facility, better known as Red House, home to 14 hand-picked astronauts. They've lived here since 1998, training, sleeping, and eating together. All friends, but competing for a place on the next manned mission. Some may never make the cut, but one has already made history. Young Li Wei, China's first man in space. I was very proud and excited to be selected for the mission and make China's dream of going to outer space a reality. I'm lucky to have enjoyed the view of China from orbit. As former elite fighter pilots, they've all seen their homeland from the year before. The decision to turn China's top guns into astronauts makes perfect sense. Every uh, human spaceflight program has started with military test pilots. You have this training that allows you to think operationally, the discipline to work through the procedure book uh, when that's called for, and also to use your judgment when you need to deviate from the written procedures. America has astronauts. Russia has cosmonauts. And these guys are called Tychonauts. Tychonaut is from the word, well, Tyke. Tycho is, is for Chinese for space, and a naught is just like cosmonaut, astronaut, aeronaut, uh, someone traveling through that environment. So it means a, a space traveler. One Tycho knot who's eagerly training for his spot on the next mission is Jai Ji Gung. He was young Li Wei's backup in 2003. Two years later, he missed out again. If he gets picked for this mission, it'll be third time lucky. Most people can choose their career. Some choose to be a teacher, a cab driver, or a researcher. However, you can't choose to be an astronaut because the selection is so strict. You don't get to choose. Instead, you get chosen. If Jai does get chosen, he will be part of a Chinese mission unlike any other. The mission highlight? China's first ever extravehicular activity, better known as a spacewalk. <laughs> to survive in this hostile environment of outer space, the Taikonauts need more than a talented tailor. They demand a super specialized wardrobe, custom made in China. For takeoff and re-entry, Taikonauts wear a flight suit, pressurized to about half the atmospheric pressure on Earth. It can handle any sudden changes in cabin pressure, but it's not tough enough for a spacewalk. In outer space, humans need protection from dangerously high radiation levels and perilously low atmospheric pressure. But the biggest hazard? 
is one of the millions of pieces of space junk that orbit Earth faster than a speeding bullet. One tiny rip means certain death through suffocation or decompression sickness called the bends. The Taikonaut's new spacesuit is called Fei Tian, named after a flying god carved in an ancient Chinese cave. It's designed to keep the Taikonauts alive outside the spaceship for over four hours, which should be more than enough time. But this new gear needs rigorous testing before it's mission ready. Scientists will compare its specs against a proven design, the Russian-built Orlin. Doing what we call extravehicular activity shows another level of sophistication because it's not a simple matter just to put a spacesuit on and go outside. You have to uh, develop the spacesuit. And so for China to have reached the level of sophistication to be able to do even a short space walk, that's uh, pretty impressive. But before China can impress the world, they need to simulate out-of-this-world conditions. Today, Jai Ji Gung will test Fei Tian, and Taikonaut Leo Boming will wear the Russian suit inside a massive container that recreates the vacuum of outer space. If the new suit has the tiniest defect, Jai will lose consciousness in a matter of seconds. While scientists carefully monitor and compare the performance of the equipment and the Taikonauts, another mission candidate gears up for a different test. This brand new state-of-the-art pool is the biggest in Asia and one of the few places on Earth where the Chinese can carry out zero-gravity training. Taikonaut Jing Haipeng prepares to take the plunge. In orbit, his outfit is virtually weightless, but on Earth, it weighs 120 kilos, which is why Jing needs to be winched into the pool. Ten meters below the surface, the water pressure and the buoyant suit mimic the weightlessness of space. Jing practices on a replica spaceship while the real rocket is still under construction. And like the Taikonauts, it's a long way from being cleared for takeoff. This is the Shenzhou 7 spacecraft. Shenzhou translates as divine vessel. It doesn't look much now, but in eight months, it'll keep three Taikonauts alive in outer space. Shenzhou 7 is made up of three separate modules. At the top is the orbital module, where the two spacewalking Taikonauts will prepare for the spacewalk by gradually adjusting to the vacuum of space. The crew will sit in the middle re-entry module during takeoff and landing. During re-entry, its heat shield can withstand temperatures of over a thousand degrees, hotter than molten lava. At the very bottom sits the propulsion module. It provides thrust for orbital maneuvers. And it's also the mission garage, large enough to carry satellites. One day, this section could form part of China's first space station. The entire ship is clad in an alloy casing to protect Shenzhou during blastoff. When China first unveiled Shenzhou's design, critics thought it looked too much like the Russian Soyuz spacecraft. It looks so much like it that the word went around that it must be a copy of it. Once you look at it again on second look, this similarity is literally only skin deep. And it's bigger than the Soviet design. 
It's got better solar power panels, which can actually rotate to track the sun. Its forward section can be left behind in space with its own power panels for months and months of autonomous operation, which the Russian system could never do. Uh, it is really a Chinese-developed and Chinese-built spacecraft. Shenzhou's versatile design can be constantly adapted for more ambitious missions. The capabilities are there, are there to take a crew, launch a crew of, of Chinese astronauts to the moon, to circle the moon, perhaps just to show the flag, just to say they've been to the moon. Before China can send anyone to the moon, they need more practice sending their eight-ton spaceship into orbit. To get this bird off the ground demands some serious thrust, and that requires the help of technology from a former top-secret program. T-minus four months, the Chinese Academy of Launch Technology. 300 workers build a gravity-defying, history-making rocket the powerhouse of the Shenzhou 7 mission, the Long March 2F. One man who knows it inside out is rocket assembly engineer Wang Jin Shun. The rocket is composed of several parts. The stage one rocket, which has already been loaded in the carriage. The second stage rocket, which is what we are loading now, and four booster rockets. At blast off, four 10-ton boosters and the stage one rocket combine to create nearly a million pounds of thrust. The equivalent of four Boeing 747 jets at full throttle. In just two minutes, the boosters guzzle 38 tons of fuel, then jettison. 40 seconds later, stage one burns out nearly 200,000 meters above sea level. Stage two is powered by just one engine, but on the edge of Earth's atmosphere, that's all it needs to send the spaceship into orbit 250 kilometers above the ground. Finally, after a burn time of 300 seconds, stage two ejects along with a protective casing. From here, the spaceship is on its own. The 2F rocket has a mission life of just five minutes, but it's taken more than 50 years to develop. 1965. At the height of the Cold War, China launched the ultimate nuclear deterrent. A missile called Dongfeng-5, a two-stage rocket with a three-megaton payload. Thankfully, it was never mobilized. Instead, the warhead was swapped for a spaceship and the rocket, named after Mao Zedong's revolutionary movement, the Long March. Well, the Chinese space program, like space programs in other countries, in the Soviet Union and in the US, began as a military missile program. Among all this history, there's one personality that emerges as the key element of the success of the Chinese program. That's a Chinese engineer named Shan Sui Sen. Xi'an was born in China, but educated in the U.S. By 1945, he became one of America's top scientists, an Army Air Corps colonel with clearance from the Pentagon to carry out secret rocket research. But by 1950, Xi'an's high-flying career crashed and burned. He was branded a spy for wanting to visit his parents in communist China. Five years later, the U.S. government deported him to the country of his birth, and China's early space program got the boost it needed. 
he took the Russian rockets, improved on them, using not, not technology that he took from America, not secret formula for an alloy or a rocket fuel. His judgment was the most important thing he brought back home with him. GM left a lasting legacy on the country's space program, including the Long March series of rockets. Over the years, it has been modified to carry satellites and space modules. But Wang Jin Shun knows the transition to carrying human Taikonauts hasn't been so smooth. Our rockets were mainly used to launch satellites in the past. The vibration frequency of the satellite is the same as the rocket. They actually match. But now our rocket is used to launch the spacecraft. The frequency no longer matched. Despite 50 years of research and development, no one knew how bad the vibration was until young Li Wei rode the rocket into orbit. We did encounter many unexpected challenges in the space flight. A case in point is the issue of vibration in the flight of Shenzhou 5. It was a severe problem. The vibration was so severe, it could have shaken Young to death. The incident forced the scientists back to the drawing board. Since 2003, the rocket team has made nearly 200 modifications to try to fix the problem. Now there's only one way to test it. T-minus three months. At the rocket assembly plant in Beijing, thousands of people get ready to move hundreds of rocket parts to the launch site in northwestern China. The delicate cargo is carefully packed inside custom-made railway carts for the four-day, 1,500-kilometer train journey. It's a long trip to the launch site, but their arrival will mark the beginning of the final countdown. T minus 90 days, Jiu Chuan Launch Facility, Northwest China. Welcome to Space City, the Chinese equivalent of NASA's Cape Canaveral. Once a top secret satellite facility, now the launch site for China's high profile manned space program. Giant empty hangars and deathly quiet control rooms await a very special delivery. Three Taikonauts, one spaceship, and thousands of China's best and brightest aerospace engineers will call this place home for the next three months. And this is the man responsible for making the mission run like clockwork, newly promoted deputy master of the launch site, Wang Jun. I need to organize and coordinate all kinds of work on the launch site. The problem is, it's my first time doing this job. Wang knows he'll need to expect the unexpected. On the evening before the last mission, a swarm of dragonflies flew into the launch pad. A bug in the system threatened the entire mission. They quickly decided to cool down the rocket. After they lower the rocket temperature, the dragonflies become clumsy and could no longer fly. People were sent onto the launch pad to catch them. They caught nearly a thousand dragonflies. Quick thinking saved that mission. Now, Wong is working around the clock to prevent any other unforeseen delays. T-minus 86 days. 
the Shenzhou Express pulls into Space City Station. It's taken four long days and a half a century to get here. Now, the really hard work is about to begin. Thousands of spaceship parts are unloaded, ready for the final assembly. It's a race against the clock. Shenzhou 7 must be mission ready in just 12 weeks while the weather holds. Rocket assembly engineer Wang Jinshan takes extra pride in preparing the rocket for takeoff. Around here, he's famous for giving the rocket a fresh coat of paint to dress it up for the big day. We treat it like a girl on her wedding day. We try our best to deck it out, hoping that it's handed over in its best state and in a most beautiful appearance. The mission team pays careful attention to every detail, from rocket fuel to human fuel. A variety of Chinese dishes are especially prepared and packaged by the Red House chefs in Beijing. Forty kilos of space food make up Shenzhou 7's in-flight meal service. But there was a time when the astronauts' appetite wasn't part of the program. When Russia launched the first man into space, he ate a tube of chocolate paste. The Americans weren't even sure whether humans could swallow in zero-g. But by the time China made history, it was their banquet that made front-page news. On the menu, Kung Pao chicken, shredded pork with rice, and mooncakes for dessert. But Chinese space food is about more than just taste. On this mission, the Taikonauts will supplement their diet with traditional Chinese medicine to keep their yin and yang in balance. Some remedies are so effective, they could one day be prescribed to every space traveler. In one study, physicians tested and compared the cardiovascular function of Chinese taikonauts and Russian cosmonauts immediately before and after a mission. The Taikonauts drank a special space tea brewed with medicinal herbs. The cosmonauts had no tea. When all the space travelers returned to Earth, doctors discovered the tea-drinking Taikonauts had significantly less loss in heart and lung function compared to the cosmonauts. T minus 30 days. Hundreds of engineers race against the clock to finish the final assembly of the Shenzhou spaceship. In just one month, it'll head for the heavens if all goes well.
T-minus 30 days. Location classified. Gobi Desert. A rehearsal of a full-blown emergency of China's manned space mission is underway. If disaster strikes, this drill will save lives. All of Space City's personnel are trained to respond to every imaginable worst-case scenario, from a water landing to launch pad evacuation. Nothing gets left a chance. Emergency planning becomes second nature to all spacemen. Being an astronaut, you're always aware of the risks of what you're doing, and every phase of flight has its own risk. Deputy Master of the Launch, Wang Jun, inspects a critical part of the mission, the launch pad and umbilical tower. You might think umbilical tower is a strange name, but this is the last point of contact with the rocket before it takes off. It's just like an umbilical cord that connects a baby with its mother. The tower connects the rocket to vital power and fuel supplies and gives engineers access for the all-important pre-flight tests. Directly underneath the rocket engines is a five-story deep reinforced concrete hole in the ground, a safety feature designed to prevent the tower from going up in flames during blast-off. The flow of fuel from the exhaust at takeoff is very strong. These gutters divert them into two sides to prevent fire. If a fire erupts while the crew is working nine stories up, they have a quick exit into a fireproof bunker. This tube is actually an emergency escape. Inside are escape bags in which we can jump when there is an emergency. We are now on the ninth floor of the tower where Taikonauts enter the spaceship. 60 meters off the ground, the launch site's multiple emergency procedures were developed to prevent a tragedy like the one that struck NASA's first Apollo mission. Apollo 1 would have been America's first manned rocket to the moon. But on January 27, 1967, just three weeks before launch, the command module went up in flames, claiming the lives of three astronauts. The disaster delayed the launch by 20 months, while NASA developed a new range of safety procedures. Apollo 1 accident, the tragic loss of the crew, we were able to completely redesign the Apollo spacecraft and arguably make it much safer. Same thing after the Challenger and Columbia accidents, the shuttle accidents. Uh, we, we tragically lost the crews, and, uh, but what we did was we improved the vehicle after the accident investigations and were able to make safer space shuttles. Now, this is true in any uh, facet of aerospace. Every time there's an airplane accident, uh, there's a detailed investigation. You look for the root cause and you make changes and make the whole program safer. China's manned space program has never suffered a fatality, but they have learned from devastating rocket failures. Wang Jinshun will never forget the day he saw a mission go up in smoke. I witnessed the February 15th incident in 1996. It was a shocking accident. Wang's team was launching a Long March rocket with a commercial satellite payload when something went horribly wrong. The rocket launched, then about eight seconds later, I could see there was something wrong with it. It 
flew off the 50 meter high tower with big inclination. After a while, it's like a fire dragon flying out of the water, going horizontal. Finally, a huge thunder. The ground crew watched the catastrophe, utterly helpless. A rocket isn't like a car, which people can drive and take control. A rocket isn't like that. There is a program of self-destruction. You can't do anything to save the rocket. Wang's team couldn't save the rocket, but they can save lives, thanks to the emergency escape tower. The tip of the rocket looks like a needle, but it's actually a series of 10 solid fuel boosters designed to automatically eject 120 seconds into flight. But if things go wrong, the escape tower will carry the Taikonauts and the Shenzhou spaceship out of harm's way and land them safely on the ground. T-minus 14 days. The rocket is now fully assembled and ready to be transported from the assembly garage to the launch pad. This is called vertical deployment. A tedious two-hour journey that covers a distance of just two kilometers. This mega haul must move slowly. Any sudden movements and the rocket could tumble. Deputy Master of the Launch, Wang Jun, keeps track of the load. And Chief Meteorologist Leo Hantao keeps his eye on the sky. We can't take the rocket back if the weather changes. Sudden strong gusts of wind will make the rocket shake and could topple it altogether. The pressure is the highest at this moment. As the rocket makes its long march to the launch pad, the team shares some nervous moments. At the very beginning, no one knew whether it was safe or not to do the redeployment. The wind was very strong. In the end, the wind got weaker. Leo's forecast is right on the money. Now, he has to wait and hope for perfect weather come launch day. T minus 48 hours, the final countdown to China's third manned mission into space. The Chinese press meet the mission Taikonauts for the very first time. After years on the sidelines, Jai Ji Gang finally gets to go into space, and even better, become China's first spacewalker. He'll be accompanied by Leo Boming and Jing Hai Pan. Soon, these Taikonauts will join a very exclusive group of space travelers. On uh, everyone's first mission, you know, the uh, the whole thing is people ask you, well, were you nervous, were you scared? The only thing that uh, astronauts are nervous about before their flight is that something's going to prevent them from having the opportunity to go. As the clock ticks down to zero hour, the launch pad team race to get the rocket mission ready. Now, they begin the most dangerous part of the pre-flight procedures, pumping fuel into the rocket. Fueling up the rocket is Wang Jun's most hazardous challenge. He needs to pump 500 tons of highly flammable liquid fuel into the tanks. 
This is where the oxidant fuels the rocket. The pipe for burning agent is over there. When the oxidant and the burning agent meet, it creates intensive combustion. So the two pipes are separated far enough away from each other that it won't cause an explosion. Each motor has two separate fuel lines. One contains the burning agent called UDMH. The other holds the oxidizing agent dinitrogen tetroxide. The two chemicals meet inside the engine's combustion chamber and burn at thousands of degrees. The combustion releases an intense steam of high pressure gases, creating enough thrust to blast the rocket into outer space. T minus eight hours. Jai Ji Gung leads Leo Boming and Zheng Haipeng out to the launch site. They are now just hours away from making space history. They spend their time finalizing flight and re-entry plans inside Shenzhou's flight deck. The Taikonauts stay firmly focused on the mission ahead. What I felt, and what a lot of people feel at booster ignition, is actually a sense of relief. You know, it sounds funny, but uh, once those boosters light, there's no turning them off, and so uh, there's a sense of relief that, hey, I'm getting my chance to go. T-minus two minutes. Only three people left on the launch pad. Ten years of preparation comes down to this one moment. Supported by the entire nation, Shenzhou 7 is at last cleared for liftoff. After a smooth, vibration-free blast-off, the three mission Taikonauts acclimatize to their new space environment. 24 hours into orbit, they are about to go where no Taikonaut has ever gone before. Outside. The Chinese-made Feitian spacesuit passes the ultimate test with flying colors. Years of training and hard, hard work have finally paid off. Jai Ji Gung, who has waited so long, takes his historic first step outside. The instant I opened the hatch, I glanced at the Earth. It was marvelous. I felt the earth we lived on and relied on was just above my head. It was huge and beautiful. Outer space is black on TV, but to me it appeared translucent, endless, rich and colorful. 2,000 years after ancient China first fired a simple rocket toward the heavens, modern China celebrates its greatest achievement in space. The success of Shenzhou 7's mission 
will ignite the next generation of space exploration. A plan already underway back on Earth. The Shenzhou 7 space mission will forever be celebrated as China's first spacewalk. But even before the Taikonauts return to Earth, the nation's next phase of manned space exploration has already begun. An ambitious plan to delve further into space than never before. In the near future, we will build our own space station, and we will build our own cargo ship that will serve the space station and exploration further away. But before China takes the next great leap upwards, the rocket team must head back to the drawing board. They've got to go to the next generation of Long March rockets. They call it a Long March, but it's an entirely new design. It's going to be into an Ariane 5 class, a Saturn, a Saturn 1 class, a Russian Proton class. This is the Long March 5. When it's finished in 2014, it will be China's first heavy lifter, capable of carrying a 25-ton payload into orbit. and built with the same technology as the heavy lift vehicles replacing NASA's retired shuttle fleet. Weighing in at 800 tons, it's three times bigger than the Long March 2F. But the current Space City won't get to launch this rocket. On the southern island of Hainan, a bigger, better rocket launch site is under construction. The Long March 5, especially launching from Hainan Island, would certainly be able to send a spacecraft to the moon. Located just 19 degrees north of the equator, the new launch center has a natural advantage over the old space city. Well, the fact that Hainan Island is closer to the equator means that uh, any rocket launching from there can take more advantage of the natural spin of the Earth. So the fact that the American Apollo missions launched from 28 and a half degrees from the, uh, the Kennedy Space Center in Florida uh, gave us a huge advantage over the Russians who were trying to go to the moon, launching up at uh, 51.6 degrees uh, uh, inclination. This century, a spirit of global cooperation has replaced the old space race rivalry of decades past. An international coalition could champion a return to the moon, and a China on the rise could play a starring role. China would be an ideal partner in an international coalition because it has the sophistication, the technology, and the resources to mount these, uh, these kinds of missions. 40 years ago, Few people predicted China's meteoric rise in aerospace exploration. Today, the world's newest spacefaring nation prepares for bold new adventures into space. 500 years ago, a, a dynastic ruler would have called it the mandate of heaven. They're doing it for real in the heavens. The next chapter in space exploration may be written by 21st century China. Russia has cosmonauts, and these guys are called Tychonauts. Tychonaut is from the word, well, tyke, Tycho is, is for Chinese for space, and a naut is just like cosmonaut, astronaut, aeronaut, uh, someone traveling through that environment. So it means a, a space traveler. One Tychonaut who's eagerly training for a spot on the next mission is Jai Ji Gung. 
He was young Li Wei's backup in 2003. Two years later, he missed out again. If he gets picked for this mission, it'll be third time lucky. Most people can choose their career. Some choose to be a teacher, a cab driver, or a researcher. However, you can't choose to be an astronaut. Because the selection is so strict, you don't get to choose. Instead, you get chosen. If Jai does get chosen, he will be part of a Chinese mission unlike any other. All friends, but competing for a place on the next manned mission. Some may never make the cut, but one has already made history. Young Li Wei, China's first man in space. I was very proud and excited to be selected for the mission and make China's dream of going to outer space a reality. I'm lucky to have enjoyed the view of China from orbit. As former elite fighter pilots, they've all seen their homeland from the air before. The decision to turn China's top guns into astronauts makes perfect sense. Every uh, human spaceflight program has started with military test pilots. You have this training that allows you to think operationally, the discipline to work through the procedure book uh, when that's called for, and also to use your judgment when you need to deviate from the written procedures. America has astronauts. China's great leap into space, boldly going where few have gone before. Only the third nation in the world able to launch its own astronauts into space. They're doing it for real in the heavens. Now, go behind the scenes of a top secret mission, codename Shenzhou 7. In this high stakes, high tech operation, the rewards are great and so are the dangers. Follow the astronauts. Rocket scientists. The mission highlight, China's first ever extravehicular activity, better known as a spacewalk. To survive in this hostile environment of outer space, the Taikonauts need more than a talented tailor. They demand a super specialized wardrobe, custom made in China. For takeoff and re entry, Taikonauts wear a flight suit pressurized to about half the atmospheric pressure on Earth. It can handle any sudden changes in cabin pressure, but it's not tough enough for a spacewalk. In outer space, humans need protection from dangerously high radiation levels and perilously low atmospheric pressure. But the biggest hazard is one of the millions and engineers, as they count down to a mission like none other blazing a trail to the future, a giant step in space exploration that could propel one of the world's oldest civilizations to the moon and beyond. T minus 200 days, Beijing city, location classified. For a new breed of space explorer, this is where it all begins. China's most advanced training facility, better known as Red House, home to 14 hand-picked astronauts. They've lived here since 1998, training, sleeping, and eating together 